Welcome to the program. I'm Mark Imperial. This segment's being brought to you by BooksGrowBusiness.com. It's the place where busy professionals get their books done to educate consumers, grow their businesses, and to leave a legacy. I'm doing a series of spotlights on remarkable business intermediaries and brokers from across the country. Joining me on this segment is Fritz Fowler. He's the founder of Verity Business Brokers out of Houston. Fritz, welcome to the program. Thank you, Mark. Glad to be here. Fritz, tell us a little bit about your work and who do you specialize in helping? Sure. So um, my Verity company, I created about two and a half years ago. Um, at the time, my wife and I owned a small business and I was interacting with business owners every day. And that's one of the main reasons I, I stepped into the business brokering world. Um, I don't necessarily specialize in any, any industry at the moment. However, that could change. Um, I get calls all the time from buyers looking for manufacturing, distribution, logistics, healthcare, IT. Uh, so it, it's a broad range there. Um, I just haven't decided if I'm going to specialize in anything, what that's going to be. So this topic of the great resignation has been in the news and an inspiration for this whole series. Has that right. impacted your area? Have you seen more buyers? Have, have more people uh, that have been on the fence about selling come, come out? What have you seen? Yeah, I've seen, so on the buying side, yes, tremendous amount of people looking for businesses. There's money sitting on the sidelines just waiting to be put somewhere. Um, so I get calls weekly, emails weekly from individuals, family, businesses, uh, private equity, VCs. And um, from a, from a uh, uh, people looking to maybe switch jobs, uh, get away from corporate, buy their own business, um, lots of movement there. Uh, I just had a, meet, a lunch meeting with a friend of mine who's an attorney and he wants to get out of that and move into maybe buying into a business. So there's a lot of moving parts and especially in Houston, oil and gas got hit pretty good. So people are, you know, deciding, do I, do I go back into that or not? So th there's a lot of activity. It's just trying to find the right fit and the right business for people that are looking for that. So for folks that I understand that, you know, people selling their business that have been doing it for a long time, this might be the first time they're going through the process. So they don't really know yes. that much about the process. What kind of questions do you get from folks when they first consider selling? Um, well, <laughs> how much do you charge, right, um, is one of the main ones. And um, it's really about, you know, um, where do you find buyers? How's your process different from others? And the way I, I tee that up is I'm all about the human element, right? So it's not about me just making my fee. It's about making sure that you've heard the saying, if you help somebody get what they want, you get what you want, right? So, Zig Ziglar. Right? Um, so, so I'm all about um, client-focused, not just, hey, here's a buyer, let's go on down the road. It's making sure that both sides are, are happy walking away. Even though I'm representing a seller, I'm always making sure that it's the right buyer, not necessarily just, hey, this is how much you're gonna make, here's a buyer. So um, I think that makes me a little bit different uh, out in the broker world. Um, that's one of the things I had thought about getting into the space is how do I make myself different and stand out? And if you come to me as a, as an owner, you're dealing with me from A to Z. So I'm, I'm there from day one till the day you close. Um, and I make sure that, that you walk away happy. And at the end of the day, if I get my fee, that's wonderful. Um, you know, got to make some money somewhere. But, but I really try to connect with the owner and, and talk through the process. It's very simple. Don't make it complicated. Um, and, and I think people appreciate that. 
Is it difficult to sell a business on your own? Like what are some of the maybe gotchas yeah. and pitfalls people don't understand? Yeah. Um, I wouldn't say maybe not gotchas, but it's, it's, it's more um, if you're trying to run a business and then you've got this other thing in the back of your head of, oh my gosh, I need to try to sell it. Then you lose sight of the day-to-day -day operations and continuing to improve your business. So for somebody like me to come in, I take hold of that back of the mind process so the owners can still focus on their day-to-day -day operations and continue to, to work their business and build it and not lose sight of that. So I'm handling all the back office, if you will, talking to buyers, um, putting together memorandums to be listed. So, so I handle all that while you as the owner can still focus on your business. Um, one, one back to your other question about this great res, res, uh, resignation. Um, a lot of companies that I've talked to that um, I ask about, do you want to sell? COVID was a big hiccup. So, so I get a lot of, well, we're not going to do, do it now. We're trying to catch up to, you know, prior to 2020 because we got hit pretty good. So I hear a lot of that, of building back up and then we're ready to sell. So do you find that sellers have a lot of uh, misconceptions? Are there any myths or misconceptions that they hear about selling a business? What have you heard? Um, I would say the biggest thing is brokers don't really care. I, I, and I say that not to be mean to other brokers, but, but it really is true. Um, you know, oh, the broker, here's another broker. They just want their fee and they don't really care about, you know, my business. Um, or, hey, you're going to sell my business to this person and they're going to just Go run it into the ditch, right? Because um, it's very emotional. You're tied to your business for years and years. And, you know, you don't, that's your baby and you don't want to let it go to some yahoo that's going to screw it up. Uh, so those are, in terms of myths, um, I would say that those are kind of the, the ones that come up. As you start to work with uh, these business owners that are considering selling, do you find that they've made some mistakes in preparing or anything that they might have uh, goofed up on or any pitfalls that you see people commonly falling into that you could warn about? So Mark, the biggest, one of the biggest things I see is no tax returns, um, keeping up with financial reporting. That's a biggie. And you'd be surprised, you would think that, you know, Hey, I own a business. I got to keep track of my P and L and, and taxes. That's not necessarily true. Um, and you know, I have to tell people if you don't have that, it's going to be pretty tough to sell it because buyers are going to want to see that. Um, having the right people in place, you know, uh, making sure you've got the right IT person or accounting or, or you know, sales person. I'm big on that, putting the right people on the right seat in the bus, right? Um, so, but, but the financial piece of that is a big, um, a lot of, lot of people, you know, don't have the right financial setup or systems to track all that because you have to have that in order to sell your business. Fritz, you, you, sort of told us how you got into the business. What inspired you to, to choose this business? Can you take us back a little bit further? And what were you doing before? And, and yes, really hit it for you that said, I want to work with business owners. Right. So my prior experience is in oil and gas. I was in it and banking. I was in both of those industries for 15 years. And um, I just like connecting with people and using my network to help them with their business. Um, whether it was prior to being in business broking or not, I, I just, that's what, it makes me feel good to say, hey, look, um, business owner, you don't, you need an attorney, a CPA or whatever. Um, I've got one over here. 
trusted, you know, person that you can talk to. And, and, and so that's one of the other things that I'm very good at doing. And that, that's one of the things that lean me to maybe a business broker is good for, for my personality and, and connecting people. And it seems to be, you know, working out. Before I ask you my last question, for somebody sure. considering selling today, um, but they don't know where to start or how to choose a business broker, what's the most important thing they should look for? Um, well, a, a couple of things. One, um, you know, maybe talking to people that have, that have done business with the business broker before, um, past clients, um, CPAs or bankers that are referral sources and making sure that they read how the fee is structured. Um, some shops ask for a fee up front. Um, some shops ask for fees, you know, as they go. Uh, I don't do that. I have my, my way of uh, fee structure is I don't get paid until we sell the business. So um, just making sure those two things and, and reputation and integrity, I'm big on integrity. So again, um, back to, it's not just about the fee, it's about relationships and, and holding their hand from day one to, to, you know, closing. For folks listening that would like to speak with you, whether they're selling or looking for a business to buy, how can they find you Fritz, connect with you and learn more? So they can go to my website. It's Verity, V-E-R-I-T-Y, businessbrokers.com. And I have my contact information there, cell phone, email, um, and I am in Houston, Texas. Terrific. I really appreciate you taking the time and sharing with my audience today. And I wish it continued success for you and for all of your clients. Thank you, Mark. Appreciate it. That was Fritz Fowler. He's the founder of Verity Business Brokers out of Houston, Texas. And this segment's been brought to you by booksgrowbusiness.com. It's the place where busy professionals get their books done to educate consumers, grow their businesses, and to leave a legacy. That's all for now. I'm Mark Imperial, and thanks for joining me.